on this day of sadness, of anger, and of hope. <laughs> Sadness because of the fate of another millions of people who have been stigmatized. <laughs> Anger about the continuous lies that come out of this office, the UN office for drugs and for crime. In the Vienna International Center, you will hear for five days reports of governments, declarations of governments, talking about essentially figures, about hectares, about kilograms, but they will not talk about people, they will not talk about the suffering that uh, the drug war is causing among those who have none or very little responsibility or participation in the drug market. They will not talk about what drugs mean for people. They will not talk about why people take drugs or why people do not take drugs. Not only is prohibition like a religious phenomenon, not only does prohibition satisfy a religious function for many of its supporters, and not only has prohibition become a religious phenomenon in the broad sense of the term, but an examination of the roots of prohibition, extending back over 500 years, shows that it is a religious undertaking. Prohibition is a direct descendant of the dogmatism that the Renaissance Catholic Church had evolved over centuries and then used as a tool to legitimate its political goals during the age of exploration. If you don't study well, you tell, like, the result of my study is that uh, there is no mortality related uh, F. Oh. We found uh, cannabis and metabolites in their system. But I'm not really joking. A member of the European Parliament asked how it was possible to create a legal cannabis club in Spain, a country where self consumption is depenalized. How many people in this room? Para nosotros la coca es la, la cultura, representa nuestras uh, prácticas culturales y esto se ha hecho desde hace más de 2.200 años antes de Cristo. Y, por ejemplo, la coca se utiliza, por ejemplo, para mantener la religión que había, que hay, de creer en la Pachamama, que nos da los frutos de donde cosechamos nuestros productos y al dios sol que, que nos ilumina cada, cada día. Entonces para agradecer a, a nuestros dioses se utilizaba la hoja de coca porque de, de alguna forma la hoja de coca también nos da, nos acompañaba en nuestro trabajo, nos acompaña en nuestro trabajo y, y pues esa energía es parte de nuestras prácticas culturales. ¿no? Even Mr. Costa, Antonio Costa, the executive director of the UN Office on Drugs and Crime, declared in the last international uh, drug policy reform conference in New Orleans, uh, he acknowledged, and I'm quoting literally, is a drugs-free world attainable? Probably not. So why to keep this fiction? It does not diminish the use of drugs. Drug prohibition does not decrease the use on a general level. Uh, whatever they show you, of course, even the Americans can show you a few <coughs> years in which drug use diminished a little bit and, and they come up with those statistics. 
but if you have a larger picture, it's simply not true. Since the drugs were prohibited, it has gone from bad to worse. The iboga plant is an African plant that will uh, definitely cure 70% of drug addicts. So uh, iboga is uh, not patented because it is a natural molecule. Uh, it was forbidden in any place where the pharmaceutical industry has uh, some interest. So with that thought, I'm going to give you Boaz Wachtel. In the 60s, Howard was addicted to uh, heroin and he came across one day uh, ibogaine, some doses of ibogaine, he took it, he got off heroin, he didn't know what exactly was happening, but he knew he didn't have withdrawals or craving, he gave it to some other friends of his, and he, uh, the result repeated itself. Those are the type of, of uh, stories that they tell our children. It backfires because once they try cannabis and they see none of this is true, then they, they, they think that heroin, cocaine, methamphetamine doesn't have these dangers. The drug problem, I've watched this problem for four decades. And I've watched it go, 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 go from a nickel and dime industry to a multi-billion dollar worldwide economy. I'm 63 years old and I saw this happen right before my eyes. At present, there are seven million people in our criminal justice system who are either on probation, parole, halfway houses, prison, or jail. And again, 70% of them are there for drug-related charges. There are almost two-thirds of our criminal, that seven million, are young black Latino males. But we are also here to share our hope that one day those who use fear as a political weapon, as a message, will lose the credibility.